Hey, my friends, this is Jeff Yaldin, youth motivational speaker and teen suicide, suicide prevention expert. I'm here because of our two young ladies, ninth graders at East Lake High School in the beautiful state of Washington. They reached out to me, Ellie and Mega. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If I didn't, please forget. My heart is touched and I feel very grateful that I'm able to share with you some information questions that you're asking to help you with your documentary and your subjects. So uh, obviously suicide is not something that we want to spend time working on or thinking about. It can often lead us to a sense of sadness ourselves, but I think it's pretty awesome and courageous that two young ladies such as yourselves are opening your heart to ask questions. So thank you so much. Your first question you asked me is uh, why is teen suicide a problem. I want to share with you something that might help paint the picture. I want to give you my theory of suicide. As you see right here, there's a chart that I wrote. I want to explain what this means. So basically, I have, I have three circles here. I have a, a, a feeling of thwarted belonging where I'm, I'm alone. I feel like I'm, I'm alone in this world. I'm alone. Nobody cares about me. I'm alone in that, um, you know, I don't want to participate in anything. Depression. Um, I'm alone. My family's always working. Nobody has time for me. So thwarted belongingness. And then the second circle is a perceived burdensomeness. What that means is I am a burden to other people. So you have two circles. Please notice that they intersect each other. This is very important. The desire for suicide lies right here where the three circles interject. So you have the thought and belongingness, you have perceived burdensomeness, and then you have the capability of suicide. Basically, I'm not afraid to die. So what does this mean? Right here is the desire for suicide where the three of them come together. Where this the shaded area is the exact point all three come together. The upper part is where just the two of them come together. Does that make sense? So all three of them come together at one point. The top two come together right here. This little shadowed area that I have, suicide or near lethal suicide attempt. So I want to make sure that you understand before we go any further, my theory for suicide, sense of belonging, I'm alone, a perceived burdensomeness, I'm a burden on people, and then the capability for suicide, I'm not afraid to die. And not being afraid to die is a feeling that um, comes over time. So what we need to do, I don't care how popular you are or how maybe you don't feel you're popular. It, it, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that we all teenagers and adults, our parents, the people we work for, our grandparents, we all need to realize that we need each other. We need our parents. We need our friends. We need our teachers. We need our siblings. We need our coaches. When you have a sense of belonging for whatever reason that is, that's going to heighten um, your sense of belonging. You're going to feel like you have an impact on people. You have an impact on your friends, and we all do. Um, the other part is fearlessness, the ability to d die. And that's courage that is developed over time. Basically, the bottom line is people die, teenagers die, because they want to. That's it. Because they want to, they've developed it over time. When they have that desire to die and the ability to die, they're going to make a decision to die. That is a result of the theory that I just shared with you. I hope that makes sense. Number two, you say, why is there an increase in teen suicide numbers? I'm just going to keep it really simple. I think there's an increase in the way we live with technology. You look at social media, there's social media platforms popping up every single day. 
And when one goes down, a new one comes up. When one becomes better than the other, we're quick to jump at it. We get this false sense of belonging through being online. And a lot of us find value in ourselves by having many likes on our page. And if we don't have X amount of likes or people responding to something that we may have put out there, then we have a sense of sadness thinking, oh, what, am I not as popular as someone else? So I want to get to that in a second. Um, what do you think is the best solution for teen suicide? I, I, again, let's go back to the theory. Number one, the, the feeling of belonging. Have a purpose in your life that is greater than you. Um, the, uh, you know, I don't want to get into the church or state or anything, um, religion or politics, but I'm going to tell you something. The percentage of suicide amongst people that have a purpose that is greater than them is much lower than people that just wander through life without a purpose, if that makes sense. So I'm not just talking about going to church and having a purpose or a love for a higher power, but I'm also talking about in school, get involved in student leadership, get involved in any of the, the many, many, many clubs that your school has to offer. Because now you're involved in something that is about to improve the morale and the spirit of your school, of your school. You're part of that leadership team. You're part of that that team that, that brings new things and great spirit. And you're part of that team that brings the upperclassmen to feel that they're more comfortable in the school. So have a greater sense of belonging. Number two, burdensomeness. You know, reach out and help people. And don't ever let someone feel like they're a burden to you. And for you also, personally, you're not a burden to anybody. You know, it's like a bank account, so to speak. You develop a deposit of emotions in other people's lives so that when people want to take it out of you, they've already put deposits in there so they can withdraw a little bit. Same as you and I. We have friends that we want to share with. We have friends that we want to encourage and support and cheer on. But, you know, sometimes we need to have that support and encouragement, and sometimes we just need to be cheered on. But you can't expect to take it without giving it. And there's a great balancing act right there. Um, fearlessness, the ability to die, and that develops over time. Listen, there's a lot to be afraid of in life. There's a lot to be um, proud of in life. But the bottom line is, I think it's about developing a purpose that is greater than you. Find something you love to do. Um, find people that you love to be with and support and encourage and embrace other people's successes. And I'm going to go back to what I said earlier when I said I'll get back to it later. I want to talk about technology today. As great as technology is and social media and our computers and our cell phones and as great as this whole world is becoming, it's also a, uh, a tough time. It's also a tough time. So what I want to encourage you is to have down time. I think at night, you, you turn your phones off, you turn off your electrical equipment, and do what we used to do. Maybe play board games. We used to read a book, um, read the newspaper, watch the news, maybe pick up a phone. I said turn off your electronic stuff. Um, or maybe pick up the phone, call your grandparents, call a cousin, call a friend or something. But unplug yourself. Try and unplug yourself at least 8 to 10 hours a day. Um, what does teen suicide mean to me? Um, it's a good question. Teen suicide to me means um, something very alarming and scary. Um, teen suicide to me means that someone didn't reach out and ask for help when they needed it most. And I want to tell you, one of the greatest things that I did many years ago, I opened my heart, I lost my ego, and I said, I need help. 
and I'm not afraid to do that today even. So what does teen suicide mean to me? It means that someone is hurting so much and they don't know where to turn. To me, suicide is not the answer. So much to live for. But in that moment of thought, you see suicide, thinking about suicide is not a problem. That, that's not an unhealthy thought. When thinking about suicide becomes an unhealthy thought is when you then think about harming yourself or harming someone else. Before all of that, don't ever be afraid to ask for help. What is your definition of depression and suicide, you ask? I think depression is a mood disorder marked by sadness, inactivity, difficulty with thinking or concentration. Depression, I mean, I could sum it up by a feeling of a beautiful day. Your friends are out playing and you're just laying in a dark, dark room, pitch black, not sleeping, wide awake. It's just a sense of sadness as you lay your head in your pillow. What is my definition of suicide? Killing yourself on purpose? Dying by your own hand at the time that you want to end the pain. How does depression and or suicide thoughts impact the brain? I'm not a, a doctor or psychologist to be able to give you the technical definition, but um, it impacts the brain uh, greatly. Depression, sadness, thoughts of suicide. Um, you know, let me just sum it up like this. You know when you're exercising and your endorphins kick in and you start to feel pretty good? Well, I think kind of sadness and depression is the opposite. You know, so how does it affect the brain? Once you get into that cycle, you continue to stay in the cycle. And that, if you don't ask for help, can become very dangerous. How does suicidal thoughts and depression impact a person's overall health? Again, basically what I just said, um, if you don't ask for help and you stay there, your overall health, I mean, it, it can affect everything. Continue to be sad and depressed, continue to feel overwhelmed and a sense of belonging. You might feel like you're a burden. Um, one negative thought can lead to another negative thought, two negative thoughts. It's just, you know, they compound each other. If I could say one thing to a depressed person, what would it be? Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. There is help. There's help in your thoughts. There's, uh, let, me, let me also tell you this. My belief, cognitive behavioral therapy, where you can talk to a therapist and learn how to change your thought pattern. Number two, combined with your doctor, maybe a prescription. I don't want to get into over prescribing, but if you can can confidently with your parents tune into your own health and how things make you feel. Doctor and therapy, medication and therapy, I think can be um, very significant in your overall health and well-being. What is your message to someone who wants to help a friend suffering from depression but doesn't know how? Great question. If you know of someone that's suffering from depression, I want you to have the courage to speak to them. And if you feel that you can't speak to them, then as a friend, you have a great responsibility to go find a trusted adult and share with them your concerns about your friend. And that trusted adult, I'm sure, understands their responsibility to do what needs to be done and maybe get them to administration get them to uh, get their parents informed and uh, maybe get guidance and mental health involved. So ladies, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know my phone number. Let me know how I can help you further. I am super proud of you ladies for what you're doing. Thank you for making a difference in the world. You're very special.